Hello! Welcome to part two of the Viper Finalist Showdown. Last time we took the cars to the track to see which entries scared us more. Acute Shark won over Vigoso. Apex won over CRW Pitman. Mr. Chips took the nod over Gem Knight. Flamers outspooked Lanson. Netblitzer got sideways while Crypt was a grip machine. And Donut Snail took the win over Tech 1LE. Now it's time to choose a grand finalist out of these six pairs with four more showdowns. So first we are going to judge these cars based on which has the most Viper-like sound. Shark's car gives me the smooth, exotic flavor in its sound, but it's honestly just more loud than anything. Vigoso's car, on the other hand, might be one of the quietest cars in this competition. I do appreciate the fact that a turbocharged backfiring machine would be a rare treat in 1982, but it lacks enough of that turbo or exhaust noise to really be exciting. The wind's gonna go to Shark on this one. On the drag strip, both cars were exceptionally fast, but Vigoso blitzes into the tens and takes the win. Next up is going to be the standout competition. I put both cars into the 1982 brochure to see which stands out in the lineup. This is a tight call, but Shark's car has more of that like elegant 90s look, and Vigasso's car is just a little bit more flamboyant. It's sharp, it's eye-catching. Vigasso is going to take the win on this one. With both cars at two wins, it's time for the top speed challenge. I did this challenge last on all of the cars to ensure that I wasn't biased during the standout call. But I am biased to say that both of these cars are entirely too fast. Shark's car hits the limiter at 215 miles an hour. 40 miles an hour faster than the fastest car in 1982. Vigasso, on the other hand, was no slouch coming in at 210 miles an hour. This hands the grand finalist win and this most excellent trophy to Shark. First hit the drag strip is Pitman. Another quiet entry here, as you might expect from a Turbo 4. Again, an appreciative nod to the fact that Turbo 4 sounds would be unique to this era, but this one again doesn't give me enough of any sounds really to give me a nice emotional response to it. With a wildly different combo, Apex's car is pure muscle. This car sounds like it's more from like 1969 than 1982, but it still has enough flair to get my vote. On the drag strip, this one's uh, one of the bigger blowouts. Apex's 12.1 is untouchable, but a 13-1 is actually pretty respectable for the parts that Pitman is using. Interestingly, this knocks Pitman out right away with a 3-0. But let's see how they shape up in the final two comparisons. Styling is where Pitman's entry won me over from the start. This car looks not only perfectly 80s, but nicely revolutionary as well. Versus Apex car, kind of like it sounds, it looks a bit dated. It, it's just not very fresh. With just a little bit more fang, I feel like Pitman's car could have been a real contender in this whole competition. With Pitman's win there though, it's time for another rough one, as we look at top speeds. Pitman's car is topping out at just about 150 miles an hour.
Apex, though, only goes 167 due to gearing. That is still enough, though, for Apex to get this neck. This one is going to be spicy. We've got Gem up first here with his Turbo V6. This car has a surprisingly low grunt noise. It reminds me a bit of the modern hidden turbo V6 engines. Mr. Chips though, this is a wild sounding inline sex. Not only is it loud, but it's raunchy sounding. This car sounds menacing and scary, and I love pretty much everything there is to do about that. This is a sound win for me. It could have been a closer call on the drag strip, but Jem's car has some gearing that really holds it back. Back to a 13.0 to Mr. Chip's 11.9. Once again, we have a 3.0 blowout, but we continue on. Both of these cars are excellent standouts in the visual lineup. The wild louvers and vents and windows and angular design on both cars, honestly, give them aggressive looks that make them a whole revolution for Dodge. To me, though, Gem's car stands out a little bit more. Probably, you know, partially thanks to that yellow paint, but the overall design on Gem's just feels a little bit crazier. In top speed, Gem's car takes its time, thanks to that gearing, but eventually slices to 194 mile an hour top speed. Mr. Chips clocks in at 185 miles an hour, a perfect fit for the era, just a notch below Jem's big headline speed. Not quite enough though, Mr. Chips gets the glorious snack in this fantastic duo. Another varied matchup here. Lanson up first, roaring down the track with his V10. Good, aggressive, and smooth V10 noises here. Enough sound without being just overwhelming. Flamer's car, on the other hand, sounds like a Group B rally car. Bops and bangs all over the place. But honestly, the V6 drone just doesn't make me smile. This one is close, but I'm going to give it the nod to Lanson on this one. Close one on the drag strip as well. 11.3 for Flamer's, but 11.6 for Lanson. Only three tenths between these two. Both are fast cars for sure, but Flamers is going to take the nod. Moving on to visuals, Lanson's car comes in with a very corporately appropriate design, whereas Flamers is just way out there, but still carries some of the markings of, you know, kind of like Dodge's soon-to-be design choices. I'm going to give the standout one here to Flamers, mostly thanks to that very rally-inspired bodywork. So that's all decided here, but we'll still make a run down the highway and see what the top speed of these cars is. Lanson's car tops out at 178 miles an hour and gives us a spectacular send-off.
Flamers tops out at 171, well, I'll let Arrow, but still has enough to take the Grand Snack. Crypt's car is another turbo 4 entry, but with a lot more bite than the others. This one makes use of that turbo 4 power plant to make it very, very fast. But it also leans heavily on the turbo to make noise, rather than the exhaust, which is a smart play. Nitblitzer has V8 muscle, but it doesn't really strike me as unique. It's a pretty simple cross-plane V8 rumble. So I think on a curveball here, I'm actually kind of more fond of Crypt's exhaust note than Netblitzer's, which uh, is a surprise to me. On the drag strip, that Turbo 4 couldn't be stopped, besting Netblitzer by three tenths of a second. On the visual front, this one is difficult. This is a lot of work in Netblitzer's car. It's weirdly elegant, even if it is blocky. Crypt's livery work and concept car vibes, blending of curves and sharp lines working together, that design just really takes the cake for me. It's, it really jumps out of the page. And that's three in a row for Crypt, locking in the win. But both of these cars are lightning quick, so let's go ahead and see what they could do. Crypt smoothly and methodically cruises up to 186 mile an hour top speed. Netblitzer's car surges up to 186 miles an hour, begging for more, but lacked the, the space and stability to do so. You could call it a tie, but either way, it's 4-3 or 3-2. Crypt gets the snack. Wind off the pairings with some serious muscle. Tax Turbo V8 starts us off. I really expected to like this unique combo. But maybe it's just how it came through in BeamNG, maybe it's just how it's configured, but I was just left a little bit underwhelmed by the sound of it. Donut's more conventional V8 up now. Now this thing sounds high strong, it sounds sharp, and it just gives me you know, that little tingly feeling as it really revs out. It's not quite that big blobby V8 muscle car sound, and I dig it. On pace, that turbo scoots tack to an 11.6 to Donut's 11.8, another close drag race. Visually, this one is really hard. Donuts fits so well with the fleet, but still manages to look pretty wild. The roof line is a huge draw to me. Tax car, though, has these big wide hips that breaks it free from the slab sides of everything else that's in the lineup, and I think that's the thing that really brings my eye the most attention, and I'm gonna give it the nod. And that ties things up. So it comes down to the top speed tiebreaker. Will the turbo set tack free? Donuts Nails NA Machine puts down a top speed of 179 miles an hour. Tax car, however, is an absolute monster. Hitting 201 miles an hour on the highway here. And honestly, it probably had some more in it if it had the space to do it. It is incredibly fast, and with that, becomes the final car to join the Grand Finalists. So there we go. That's the six Grand Finalists. Six incredible takes on what the 1982 Dodge Viper concept car could have been. I love the variety in this field of six. There's a lot of designs that I'm very sad to see go, but I'm real happy with the six that we ended up with. Superb job by all the designers, including everyone that has been knocked out at this point. All of these are fantastic cars. 
Tune in next time as we deep dive into these six cars, though. With the help of some actual automotive journalist eyes, we're going to pick the 1982 Viper concept car. Thank you as always for watching. These videos have been an incredible amount of work, and I do hope that you are enjoying them. I don't know. N mail it to a friend? I don't, do something. Try. Just try.